evolution is the central theme to biology. All living things that are alive today have evolved from a single common ancestor. Darwin's theory of natural selection explains how this has led to such well adapted species, but this video looks at the evidence we have that evolution has taken place. Evolution is a change in a species over time. So to study evolution, we have to see what a species was like, compare it to a different time and see if there's any change. The trouble is that the time it takes species to noticeably change is usually longer than a human lifetime. There are several well-known examples of species evolving so quickly we can see it happening over a period of just a few years or decades, but more often we need a time scale measured in thousands or millions of years. This means we need a way of studying what life was like on Earth a very long time ago, well before humans themselves evolved, and scientists do this using fossils. The trouble with using fossils to study what living things were like a long time ago is that they're so rare, and those that are found are rarely complete. Only the hard parts of a living organism, such as bones or shells, can be fossilised. So even when we do find them, there's lots of things we can't find out from them, like the colour of skin. Some species that don't have hard parts just won't be found in the fossil record, which makes studying the ancient ancestors of jellyfish or earthworms very difficult. Fossils are very, very rare. If you consider how many living things have existed on Earth in the past few billion years since life first evolved, the number of fossils we have is an incredibly small number. This is for two reasons we'll look at in more detail. Firstly, fossils are hardly ever made, and secondly, fossils that have been made are hardly ever found. So why are so few fossils made? Well, it requires certain conditions to happen for an individual to become a fossil after dying. Firstly, they need to die somewhere where they can be covered by sediment or mud very quickly, before the whole thing has been eaten, disturbed or rotted away. The layer of sediment that the individual is then in needs to be compressed so much that it forms rock. This will have an impact on the shape of a fossil that's made, squashing it flat and making it difficult to tell exactly what it used to be. It also means the fossil is likely to now be deep underground under a large amount of sedimentary rock. All of this happens only very rarely, so a tiny fraction of what has lived has become a fossil. But just becoming a fossil doesn't help. A scientist needs to find it before it can be studied and used to gain evidence from. For this to happen, the rock needs to be brought back to the surface without damaging it and the fossil inside. The processes that move rocks to the surface, mostly earthquakes and volcanoes, would usually destroy any fossil before they were found, or at least make them so fragmented that they were much less use. So, even once a fossil is made, only very rarely is it found in a useful state so that it can be studied. All of this means that there are large gaps in the fossil record. These gaps are there because the soft parts don't usually form fossils, most individuals with hard parts don't form fossils as they were destroyed, and most fossils that were made are buried deep underground and have not been discovered. This means fossils give us a very incomplete picture of what these species were like, and each new discovery can change what we think that species was like as it adds to the amount of evidence we have. As more fossils are collected and studied, the more accurate the interpretation of what the species was really like would be. Fossils, then, are a way of getting evidence for evolution by looking back in time. However, we can also study what's alive now to gain evidence. If you compare the structure of many living things, they often show a lot of similarity. Most vertebrates have limbs, and even when they look very different on the outside, analysing their skeletons shows how similar they really are. All these very different animals have the same basic bone structure, with a humerus, radius and ulna, and also five fingers. We call a limb with five fingers a pentadactyl limb, and it's a structure which is shared with ancient fossil specimens. This is very strong evidence that these species had a common ancestor and have then adapted this feature depending on their habitat and lifestyle. In this way, the pentadactyl limb has become a wing for a bat, by evolving very long fingers and having fully webbed fingers. It has evolved to run on for a horse and be a flipper for a whale. All these different uses and the same bone structure are clear evidence for evolution. So, 
evolution means a change in a species over time. To gain evidence for this, we can look back in time using fossils or study what's alive today and analyse for shared characteristics such as the pentadactyl limb. Fossils may be the only way to study what was alive in the past, but there are gaps in the fossil record because so few individuals form fossils. Only the hard parts of an organism usually fossilise and most fossils are buried deep underground and have not yet been found.